Well, the world's largest vaccine manufacturer in India will begin distributing a new malaria vaccine in Africa. That's starting in May. The disease kills more than 600,000 people each year. 95% of the victims are in Africa and most of those victims are children. But as well as vaccines, there are other ways to try to eradicate malaria and other diseases which are transmitted by mosquitoes, including what are called gene drives. And uh, to talk more about this idea and the ethical concerns, I think, around it, uh, we bring in our science editor now, Julia Seeger. Hi, Julia. So first of all, you know, what is what is uh, this new vaccine? So the vaccine is called R21. It was developed, uh, co-developed with the University of, uh, of Oxford and the distributor that you mentioned, uh, Serum Institute of India, plans to ship 25 million doses to Africa starting in April. It's going to start with Chad, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mozambique, uh, the South of Sudan, and then later on in the year, also Uganda and Nigeria. Now, R21 was recommended by the WHO as soon as October 2023, and it comes comes after the rolling out of another vaccine, RTSS, developed by GSK, was, which was actually the very first vaccine against malaria. And both of those vaccines have a, a, an efficiency rate of 75 percent, which is actually pretty good. Now, scientists actually, uh, you know, turned to the development of a vaccine because until now, the fight against malaria was really much focused on what we call anti-vector control. So the use of mosquito nets and uh, insecticides to try to stop you know, the, the transmission of the disease. But the problem with that is that is it's an never ending, um, a never ending battle, if you will, because as each time you, 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 you know, you, um, you let down your guard or you let down your efforts, of course, the situation worsens. And the other problem is that mosquitoes were able with time to adapt and become resistant to many of the insecticides that we now use. And we're not just talking about malaria. There are lots of other diseases which are transmitted uh, by mosquitoes, aren't they? And they are also causing huge that's right. They're less lethal, but of course we're thinking about Zika and dengue fever and 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 yellow fever as well. And uh, this is why scientists are now trying to find not just a vaccine for one problem, but to try to eradicate all of the vector-borne diseases. Uh, and here they use uh, what we call uh, genetic modification. They can use uh, paratransgenesis, which is uh, to try to change the parasite malaria, the malaria parasite that is inside the gut of the mosquito. And the other solution is gene drive. So here you're going to select the, the genes that are responsible for transmitting the disease. Now you have some uh, projects that are aimed at making sure that the mosquito can't uh, transmit the disease, but it's harmless. And you have others that are trying to get rid of the entire species of mosquito. And here they're going to use sterile insects strategy. So they're going to sterilize males for instance, or even if they want to get rid of it altogether, they're going to sterilize females with gamma rays. And of course, that raises ethical issues because mosquitoes uh, contribute to pollinating plants. They have their role in the food chain. And also, once you actually release these genetically modified mosquitoes, you can't control them. You can't recall them if there's a problem. So that also raises uh, problems of responsibility. And last, of course, there's the social acceptance, because here we're talking about modifying the genome of a living species. So, of course, uh, and understandably so, it raises ethical concerns. Complicated business. Thanks very much. Uh, Julia Seeger there, our science editor.